Hi, YouTube. Okay, so I thought I would do like a, another video about losing the baby and kind of everything that happened and what went wrong and um, the process I had to go through, the options they gave me, etc. So, um, it was a week ago today that we had Noah on the 27th and we actually, I don't want to say we knew Wednesday, that was my doctor's appointment and I went in and as you all know, if you've been watching my videos, I've had an anterior placenta and basically through all the ultrasounds you would see the placenta here in the front then you would see a bunch of umbilical cord and then you would see the baby. Um, and so it was, I, I barely felt him move a couple times. And it, sometimes it was hard to find the heartbeat. Um, so I think I'd done like five ultrasounds to make sure that he was still, you know, doing okay, the heartbeat was normal, etc. So I went in Wednesday and two doctors tried to find a heartbeat and they couldn't find one and I was like, oh, you know, it's happened before, I'm sure everything's okay. Um, I hadn't had any bleeding, no, no signs of, of a miscarriage or anything like that. Um, and at that point I was 21 weeks and three days. So she's like, you know, that's okay, why don't we just call it a day, you know, it's really late, it was like 5 o'clock. And we'll schedule you a, an appointment at the hospital to just have an ultrasound because they don't have an ultrasound machine in my office. Um, yet yeah, they're getting one. So I was like, okay, no big deal. And so I went to the hospital that's closest to me, not the one that I'm going to labor at, or I was going to labor at, but the one closest to me. And um, the guy was like really nice, and he was, he was letting me watch him measure the baby and then he turned the screen away which kind of was like oh mm, why did you just do that and then he's like you know give me 10 minutes and then he came back in and he's like your doctor's on the phone and I was like my heart sank to my toes like my body body literally ached everywhere and she told me and um, I went running out to the parking lot my husband was in the van um, with our kids uh, because one of them was asleep and he just realized something was wrong so I was crying and I told him and we just both kind of held each other for I don't even know how long and um, basically the doctor called me back 20 minutes later and was like okay well here are a couple of options um, and you don't have to answer right now or if you do let me know so um, her first option was to see if my body would kind of go into labor itself and just kind of have everything processed and deliver the baby and the placenta. Um, which you don't know when that's going to happen, basically. Um, sometimes you can go a couple weeks, sometimes you could go that day. Um, he had already been gone two weeks, so, um, and we didn't know that but by measurements and everything he had, he was 18 weeks and 5 days when he passed on so I was like well it's already been 2 weeks you know so the other option was to be induced um, go to the hospital that night be induced or go the next day or next couple of days be induced with Pitocin and there, I really don't remember the medication that they gave me um, the other one is kind of like Cervidel, but it's not. It's like a little, it looks like a little aspirin, um, but they give to you every six hours. So that's what they started out with. Um, the other one was called a D&E, and that's called Dilate and Extract. And um, just warning you, I'm going to give you a little bit of detail, but not the full amount, because I stopped her, so this is all I know. So a Dilate and Extract a D and E, they did not give me the option of a D and C, um, which some of you know what is. I don't. They didn't give me the option. 
So a D and E is basically you dilate, and then they take um, this device, and basically there's only one hospital, and then we have an abortion clinic in my city. So um, you dilate to 10 centimeters, and then they take this thing that will suction out the baby, but because the baby's so small, it actually can come out in parts. And when she said that to me, I was like, that is never an option. Like, that would not be an option. How can I do that to my child, who I did not want to lose, and pull him apart coming out of my body? He doesn't deserve that. So I went with the natural labor and all of that. So um, I was like, how soon can we do this? Because um, I kind of said it selfishly, but I was like, I just want to get this done and over with. Like, I just... I was in so much shock. Um, I didn't want. I don't know how to explain it, but I just didn't want him any longer in my body if he wasn't alive. Um, just thinking that, like carrying around a dead baby, and people, like I work with a community to see, have people see me pregnant still, and be like, oh yeah, it's dead. Well, it just, it was so weird. So, I went in. Thursday night to the hospital where I was going to naturally del deliver anyways. Um, I'm sorry, my allergies. The first thing that I noticed was the room that they put me in. Very nice room for the situation. In the back, not near the nursery. And the two nurses I had, I had, I had um, the same nurse twice, and then I had a night nurse who's really sweet. They're so sweet. They did anything and everything to make me comfortable. They made sure that I had someone's shoulder to cry on. Uh, they they fed me when I didn't want to eat. Um, they were there for everything, and I seriously thank God for them. They were my saints during that time because my husband. He, if it would have been like a natural delivery, he would have been great. But because of, of the situation, he was so heartbroken that he needed someone too. And since I couldn't be there for him, they were there for him as well, which was so nice. But basically, um, I demanded another ultrasound because I wasn't able to see the screen itself. And I, I was so in shock that I didn't believe it. So they did that first. They did an ultrasound in which it did confirm that he had passed on. There was no heartbeat. Um, so the next step was signing some papers about extracting an infant at 21 and a half weeks. Which is really hard to sign. It took me 10 minutes to sign it before I was like, you know, what am I going to do? This has happened. So, reading the paperwork, they gave statistics on there that one in a hundred women lose their pregnancy to stillborn. So then she inserted the pill, which didn't hurt. And then she told me, she's like, you know what, whatever you need for the pain, let me know. We can get you an epidural now. We can get you a morphine shot. Whatever you'd like. I did opt for the epidural just because... I, I thought to myself, why go through all this pain when I'm already exhausted, I'm already in emotion, enough motion, emotional pain, I don't want to feel physical pain too. Um, I did wait uh, a little bit, sorry, to have an epidural, I had like two or three hours, and then they also gave me Ambien. So I slept through the night while my... Uh, body labored, and then in the morning, um, I was sitting there trying to rest, and I felt the urge to have to go to the bathroom to pee, and so I called my nurse in, you know, I really have to pee, um, can you help me, you know, because my legs wouldn't move, so she put a bedpan under, and I sat there for a minute, and I was like, I really can't pee, I, this, it's just not happening. She goes, well, maybe if I left you alone, if you had some privacy. I said, okay, I can try. So she left, 
and I'm sitting there and I, I thought maybe to myself maybe if I kind of push a little um, maybe something might come out um, and all of a sudden I, I felt the baby coming out and so it stopped so it wouldn't completely come out into a bedpan I couldn't imagine giving birth in a bedpan so I buzzed her in really quick I was like it's, it's not he it's the baby please come in here so she came in and she removed the bedpan really quick and she put one of those pads down underneath me and I delivered the baby. Now, most of the time, I guess, when you deliver the baby, um, the placenta does not come out for a while because it's supposed to remain attached. Well, mine apparently has or had already detached, so everything came out in the sack. So he was in the sack. It was like this. He was in the sack and there was the baby and the placenta and um, you could tell that he had pooed in there because it was, there, it was dark fluid and um, the placenta like we examined everything together they let me kind of be a part of that uh, the placenta had two blood clots um, Noah had the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck three times and so the umbilical cord would be like really fat in one area and then slender and then fat and then slender from being wrapped around. And then there was a built up of fluid <coughs> right here. So there was a fluid sac. And then there was two fluid sacs on his brain. Um, so even if he would have been born, um, he would have had a lot of complications. So my husband and I have come to the term terms of you know, even though this really sucks and we really didn't want it to happen, maybe it was for the better so he didn't have to suffer in this world being so uncomfortable with all these brain problems and mental disabilities and a hard life in that category. Um, I work with mentally ill people and I just see how much they struggle every day. So um, I never wish this upon myself. Um, it happened and things happen for a reason and I've I've come to terms with that, and I think my husband has well. Um, so, for the rest of the day, we kind of held him. Um, we spent time with him. I think he was born at 9.54, and I think we kept him until 2. And some people, I tell that, and they're like, oh, that's so weird. Why would you hold a dead baby? Well, this is my baby. And it was the only day I was ever going to see him in human form. So I wanted to see. I wanted to see him. I wanted to hold him. I wanted to kiss him. I wanted to hug him. Um, I cried with him, uh, you know. And I said my my see you later's. So and so did my husband. Um, it was really hard to let go to give the nurse my baby, and know that I was never going to hold him again. Um, that was probably the hardest part. Um, as of now, I'm doing okay. I wasn't doing okay for a little bit. I actually was having really bad blood clots and cramping. Um, my breasts right now are full of milk and really painful and I think that's the depressing part is because I've never been able to really breastfeed correctly. Um, to have this milk and not be able to give it to a baby and try um, is kind of hard. Um, I haven't been back to work. I'm going back next Saturday, so after two weeks, and I'm going to have to explain to the residents that I take care of what happened and, and everything. Um, my husband and I have not discussed um, we do know that we want another child. That was the whole point. Um, but we just don't know when. I think I want to let my body rest for a bit. Um, but we haven't fully discussed it. So at this point, we're here. We're healing. We're taking it day by day. And that's all we can do. Um, I have sleeping pills to help me sleep at this point. Um, and I have... I'm on Vicodin because that epidural really hurt my back and my back hurts so much um, at the end of the day. So basically we're just trying to take care of ourselves. I'm trying to take it easy which is really not 
very easy to do. I have two kids, and I try to keep my house really clean, spring cleaning. Um, we want to move, etc., etc. Life never ends. But um, we're going to keep going. They're going to bury him at this little cemetery for infants. And uh, you paid for this little plaque, and they put it there with him. And then they have like these annual um, funerals, I guess you want to call it. And the families are invited. So we're probably going to do that. So that's where we are at this point. And I really appreciate you hearing my story and supporting us and um, giving us your prayers. It means a lot. Really, it does. Um, and I wanted to thank Hayden's Helping Hands. They're a local company that, that helps families pay for medical bills or they're to talk to or whatever. And they're a nonprofit business. So they've been a help. So um, I'm going to go. Thank you again and have a great weekend.